Today's lesson begins with a warm-up, and we are working with multiplying and dividing fractions. Remember, our first step when we multiply or divide a fraction is to write it as an um, improper fraction. So, 4 and 3 tenths as an improper fraction is 43 tenths times 3 and 2 thirds as an improper fraction is 11 thirds. Nothing can simplify, and so we're going to multiply straight across. 43 times 11 is 473 over 30. And we're going to leave it like that. Our next one is a division problem. Once again, we're make a, going to make them into improper fractions. So we're going to have 18 fifths divided by 14 thirds. And remember, to change division into multiplication, you keep, change, flip. So we have 18 fifths times 3 fourteenths. I always like to simplify, and I notice that 18 and 14 I can divide both by 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9, 14 divided by 2 is 7. Now that everything's simplified, I'm going to multiply straight across. 9 times 3 is 27 over 5 times 7 is 35. So our answer is 27 35ths. Today's I can statement is I can calculate simple interest. Simple interest is the money you earn on things like saving accounts. Um, or credit cards is the interest and extra money you have to pay. And as you get older, you'll encounter simple interest a lot more in life. To begin the lesson today, take a look at these, this slide. We have two separate scenarios here. Go ahead and read through the scenarios. And once you read through them, think about how you can create a formula to calculate simple interest using the scenarios above. So looking at sample A and scenario B, what are we going to do with the numbers presented to you? What are you going to do with the numbers presented in order to find the interest? Which I just circled. Go ahead and think on that. And once you have an idea, move on to the next slide. So, looking at the two scenarios on the last page, and we can look through those numbers and figure out how can we combine those numbers to get the interest. And if you practice, we only need one operation. What we had to do was multiply. To find our interest, we take the investment amount times the rate times the time. It's all to do with multiplication. We multiply everything together and we find our interest. So, now that we know we multiply, let's see what everything stands for so we know how to apply our formula. I stands for interest earned. Interest, and that's always going to be a money value. P, the math term we use is principal. And that's also a money value. And the principal, what that is, it's how much you invest. What you invest. It's the number or amount of money that you're starting with. We call it the principal amount. The next one is R. R stands for rate. And rates are going to be shown as a percent in your story problems, but remember, we have to use it in decimal form. Because this is like a percent equation. Remember, we always have to put our percents into decimals. And then finally, T, I'm assuming you can guess, T is time. But the trick with time is remember, it's always in years. So, you can use one if it's one year, but if it says six months, you have to change it to years. 
six months is a half of a year. So you can say 0.5 years. So write this down, and this is going to help you in order to solve the upcoming problems. On our first example problem, we have our formula for interest, I equals P times R times T, and we're going to apply that to our story problem. So we have a savings account. There is an interest rate, a rate of 1.2%. If we put in $600 for seven years, how much interest will we earn? What I like to do is I like to write out all my variables. So I can say I equals P R T. How much interest will we earn? That's what it's asking us. So our interest, our I, is our unknown. P stands for principal or the amount we invest. We put in 600 So our principal is $600. The rate of 1.2%, however, remember, it has to be in decimal form, so let's change it right now, to 0 0.012 for the rate, and our time, 7 years. And remember, we need to make sure time is in years, and we're good on that. So everything is in the right type of um, format. And now it's just applying our formula. We can say I equals P times R times T. I is X equals 600 times 0 0.012 times 7. P R T. When we solve, we end up with X equals $50 and 40 cents. So our interest earned was fifty dollars and forty cents on our savings account. This next problem is the same idea as the last one. We're opening a new investment opportunity. It offers a 15 percent interest rate. So if you put two thousand dollars into the account for 15 years, how much interest will you earn? So let's go ahead and set up our define everything. So I is our unknown. P, the principal, what we put in is $2,000. R, the rate is 15%, but remember it needs to be in decimal form, so let's change it right now to 0.15. And time is 15 years. And that's in years, so it's good to go. Plugging it into the formula. I equals P times R times T. X equals 2,000 times 0.15 times 15. X equals 4,500 dollars. So, how much interest? Interest is our I. Here it is. We earned $4,500 in interest on this investment opportunity. Our next example says, let's say you charge $600 on outdoor gear for your upcoming camping and fishing trip. You decide to take out a charge card at Cabela's to pay for your gear. The card has a 28% interest rate and you wait three months to make the payment. How much interest have you accumulated? And what is your new total to pay off? So this problem has two questions for us, but it's the same process. First, let's define everything. I, our interest is what we're finding. P, Principal amount, so how much you put in, how much you start with. We're starting with charging $600, so that's our P. Our rate is 28%, which is 0.28 in decimal form, and our time is three months. 
that's not in years. So what you do when you're given months, to change it to years, you divide by the number of months in a year. So divide by 12 months. Three months divided by 12 months is 0.25 years. Now, our rate's in decimal form, and our time is in years, so we're ready to go. Interest. So, x equals 600 times 0.28 times 0.25. The interest we accumulated on our card was $42 in interest. So, that's our first answer. Our second question says, what is your new total to pay off? To find the total, it equals our principal amount that we already owe or already invested plus our interest. So our total is the principal amount that we start with, 600, plus our interest of $42. So we now owe Cabela's six hundred and forty two dollars for our charge card our last example says that to help pay for college you take out student loans one loan we'll do this one in purple the first loan is for three thousand five hundred dollars with an eight percent interest rate and you make your first payment four years after taking it out your second loan is for $4,500 with a 6% interest rate, and you make that first payment three years after taking it out. How much interest did you accumulate in total? So, to start, I'm going to divide my page in half. One loan and the second loan. We'll start with the first loan. I is what we're looking for. P was the $3,500, the initial principal amount. R is 8%, so 0 0.08. And T is four years. So X equals 3,500 times R, 0 0.08, times T of four. That interest accumulated on the first loan comes to a total of $1,120. Now let's look at our second loan. I is what we're finding. The principal amount is how much we took out, so $4,500. It has a 6% rate, so 0 0.06 in decimal form and we took it out for three years. So X equals 4,500 times R, 0 0.06, times T of three. This interest ends up being $810. However, we need to find the interest accumulated in total. And so we're gonna take our first loan's interest plus the second loan's interest and all together, we accumulated $1,930 in interest alone. So not only do we have to pay back both of those loans, but we also now have to pay back this additional interest that accumulated. So almost an extra $2,000 on our loans. 